Good afternoon, evening, whatever the heck you are. My name is Anthony Walker, the head, the H, the E to the A to the D, and welcome to a new episode of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. What a way to kick it off with that intro. Where the heck did that come from? I do not know, but hey, I'm going with it. On today's show, ladies and gentlemen, as always, we talk Raw, we talk TNA, and we talk SmackDown. Well, TNA and SmackDown main points, we're going to talk Raw as well. I want to take the audio from what I did during the week I'm going to put it on here now and we're going to talk all the th- matters in the world of professional wrestling as we always do on here big why because wrestling matters god damn it and uh, also last week you s- heard the Jezebeth interview on the podcast that's right and uh, as a separate entity as well uh, apparently that got some good feedback and some good uh, stuff as well that was pretty pretty decent as well which was fun to do like I say and just great to do and apparently it, it, it got over and it was a hit. Well, if you thought that was a hit, wait do you hear what I've got today. That's right. Back to back weeks. Holy shit. I have. I had Jezebeth last week and I've got a new interview this week. Yay. My, my podcast is growing. By God. That's right. Colleen Masters. You probably probably think of who the heck is Colleen Masters? Well, she's a British female wrestler and if you heard the Jezebeth interview last week, Jezebeth basically called her out and slagged her off. Well, she heard the interview. She wrote underneath in the U- on YouTube saying that she didn't particularly appreciate getting slagged off by Jezebeth. She enjoyed the interview, but she didn't uh, particularly appreciate being slagged off. Well, I invited her to come on and give a retaliation, because that's what I do on this program. That's what I do on this podcast, guys. You know, if people slag somebody off and somebody doesn't like it, i.e. Colleen, you know, I'm a fair guy. I'm a fair player, you know. Get her on and, you know, have her say, you know, have her retaliation. No doubt, I'm sure Jeffrey Beth will probably retaliate and vice versa. <laughs> but, I, you know, I'm a fair guy, you know. I give people platforms. I give people the opportunity to say their piece. And as you well know, ladies and gentlemen, from previous episodes, pipe bombs well and truly matter on this podcast besides wrestling so raw smackdown tna anything else that is relevant relevant in the world of wrestling that is worth talking about and uh, yeah the colleague masters interview that will be at the end i'll save that for last that'll be the main event of this episode <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But with that being said, ladies and gents, I am going to talk about Monday Night Raw. I did an audio this week, so I'm going to play the audio. It's an in-depth audio of uh, me. If you haven't seen the video, go and check it out on YouTube. But I'm going to play the audio here, which basically says what I say about Monday Night Raw. You know, instead of me talking about the main points on here, I just thought I might as well play this, because what's the point of me talking about Raw, you know, and repeating myself, basically? So, I've got the audio. I'm going to bring it on here. So, listen out for your viewing pleasure, and I'll see you after it. This is the Raw review view from yours truly, the head Anthony Walker. See you after this. Uh, Monday Raw was last night, uh, Monday night, and it was quite the uh, the show, if you will. Now, we all know what happened on SmackDown. Dean Ambrose took the Money in the Bank briefcase and everything and hijacked it, so to speak. And The authority come out Monday Night Raw to begin it, and... Uh, start running their mouths off and everything and then uh, Paul Heyman comes out of nowhere and accuses the uh, authority for sending Seth Rollins down to cash in money in the brief the, the money in the bank briefcase on uh, Brock Lesnar which you saw the authority sent him down well the, 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 he says the authority sent him down because Brock uh, Seth Rollins almost cashed it in as you well see if you watch the United Champions again uh, but uh, Seth Rollins comes out and strongly denies that the authority had anything to do with what happened in Night of Champions, that it was all his doing. It was all his master plan. It was all, you know, cash, the, the plan to cash in money in the bank was all Seth Rollins' plan. The authority had nothing to do with it. Uh, and then Triple H intimidates Paul Heyman, shakes his hand and walks off. And then Heyman goes. And then the next minute... Everybody start, well, particularly Seth Rollins, start to call out Dean Ambrose. Um, obviously, one thing leads to another. They start running their mouths off, and then I think Dean Ambrose calls him out to the back to come and get it. And then the authority, Stephanie, Triple H, and Seth Rollins leave the ring. And as they're about to leave the ring, seeing his music hits, and out of nowhere, seeing it comes down and beats the living crap out of attempts to beat the living crap out of Seth Rollins because as you know it was Seth Rollins that caused John Cena the world championship and then 
Seth Rollins manages to get away and everything, and that was the end of that. More on that later on. The next match, or the next segment on Raw, was the triple threat match between Cesaro, Dolph Ziggler, and Miz for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, a great match, great triple threat match, I absolutely enjoyed it. Uh, back and forth match, highlight of, one highlight of the match is where uh, Cesaro tries to sunset flip the Miz. Ziggler comes in and grabs Cesaro's legs, goes to slingshot him, but as Cesaro is being slingshotted, his head hits Miz in the in the uh, in the proverbial jackpot, so to speak. You know, down there. The echo, really cool move, and he was a. Uh, I guess you can. I guess you can think for yourselves what happened with that with the Miz. That was pretty cool. And uh, at the end, Miz goes to jump off the top rope on Cesaro. Cesaro uppercuts him, knocks him clean out. And then, as he's about to, as Cesaro's about to pin, he walks right into a super kick from Ziggler, and Ziggler takes advantage and gets the one, two, three, and retains the title, which was pretty cool. After that, Ms. Dow and Ms. walk into the authorities' room, complaining that they should have got a one-on. He should Miss should have got a one-on-one -on -one match. I don't know, stunt doubles and all that, and figuring Ms. Dow was speaking for the mayor's running his mouth off. Triple H found it funny, and then goes to proceeds to tell Ms. that if you ever come in here shooting your mouth off again, come into the authorities' office shooting your mouth off at me again. Uh, your your DVD movie career will turn into the unemployment line, so to speak. You know, be, saying that Miz will be fired, so to speak. And one thing left to another after that. And then, during all that, Triple H put Miz Dow, Damien Miz Dow, in a match with Shins, which I'll talk about later on. Now, following up from the feud, I won't talk about this much. Uh, following up from the feud with, uh, or the feud that began on Total Divas between uh, Summer Rae and Natalia, Layla faced Rosa Mendez and beat her on Raw. It's pretty hard for Natalia to be a mentor to Rosa when she's having a struggle with her marriage from what it seems. Uh, Rosa was left high and dry against Layla while Natalie tried to get Tyson Kidd to focus at ringside. The former WWE Tag Team Champions indifference to his wife's protege ended up costing Rosa. Costing Rosa the match and everything. I don't know, I think Tyson's jealous that Natalie's getting on more attention than he is, from what it seems. But, uh, you know, one thing led to another. That was just like a. To me, that was a yeah, whatever match for me. That was nothing. What I, you know. That was a nothing match for me. But hey, it was what it was. Rosa got beat by Layla. Now, goes to a break comes back and def and Dean Ambrose comes out and I don't know about you guys but this was my favourite part of Raw Dean Ambrose comes out with the money in the bank briefcase and a bag in his hands which I'm guessing with Seth Rollins gear or some of his gear or anything and he was giving it away for free and everything during that Joey Mercury and Jamie Noble come out uh, two referees or officials that they have backstage tries to come out and convince um, convince uh, Dean Ambrose to hand over the briefcase didn't work so they go back and get some security as well as Seth Rollins and Seth Rollins comes out Dean Ambrose lets it go 
Rollins comes in the ring to collect the briefcase, goes to open this brief, open the briefcase, and then this green goo just pops out of nowhere and covers Seth Rollins, which was fucking hilarious. Green, this green goo just popped out, kind of like one of them pranks where you go to open it and pss, it just pops out of your face, kind of thing. And everybody started laughing, including Jamie Noble and. Uh, Including Jamie Noble and uh, Joey Mercury on the outside. It was hard not to laugh, man. It was fucking funny. And probably my favourite part of Raw. Dean Ambrose is in the crowd. Like He had that face on him. He was like... You know, that laugh face on him. And it was just fucking great. And then after that... Go back to the uh, locker room. With the authority. Seth Rollins is pissed. Absolutely pissed out of his mind and then Triple H proceeds to make a tag team match involving Ambrose and Cena versus Kane and Randy Orton however Randy Orton looked very reluctant to do this because if you saw last week's he's made it crystal clear that he's sick and tired of the authority of Seth Rollins starting up crap that them two end up cleaning up so to speak or Randy Orton has to clean up uh, but any of the way that was fucking hilarious. And if you haven't seen Raw, go back and watch it. Go back and watch that segment. That was fucking great. More on Dean Ambrose later on. Now, I want to go into a little bit of a rant here. Bo Dallas and Mark Henry. Now, Mark Henry's still a little bit, uh, you know, feeling the effects of his loss with their uh, Rusev. More on Rusev later. And uh, he proceeds to face Bo Dallas. And, be- and Bo Dallas actually beat him. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I fucking hate Bo Dallas. Seriously. I really do fucking... I can't stand this guy. I, it, it, I mean... This guy really seriously gets on my tits. He's so annoying. You can't wrestle. He's not good. Believe, I believe he's an idiot. I mean, he's horrible. And you can't take this guy seriously. I mean, the guy's a former NXT champion. So obviously you think he's good. But you can't take this guy fucking seriously. When his finishing move was made famous by a diva. And that's not a knock on Trish Stratus, one of the greatest divas of all time. But why would you want to have a finishing move that was made famous by a diva? You name me one male wrestler that used a finishing move, a finishing move in the past that was made famous by a diva. I mean, this guy's a tool. He really is. And somehow he beats... Mark Henry on Raw. However, Renee Young pulls him up backstage, tries to get an interview with him, and Mark Henry comes out from behind and attacks Bo Dallas and proceeds to beat the living crap out of him. And gets him in this and use one of them uh, them wheeled things that he had backstage and proceeds to ram it in the Bo Dallas on two occasions, completely knocking Bo Dallas out. And grabs Bo Dallas by the hand and says, That's what I do. And that made Bo Dallas beat Mark Henry worth it. Because next time, if Bo Dallas thinks about beating Mark Henry, he might want to let him win. I fucking hate Bo Dallas. God damn it. Thank God for Mark Henry doing what he did. You know, I fucking hate Bo. Brie Bella goes into a two-on-one uh, handicap match. Kind of like what Nikki Bella had to go through after Brie quit at their uh, payback for me. Uh, but this is Brie, this is Nikki trying to get one over on Brie. It didn't work because Brie beat, uh, it was Cameron and Eva Marie. Again, Total Divas comes into play. For fuck's sake. And Brie gets the victory over Cameron and Eva Marie and then sticks it to Nikki Bella by going. Yes, 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 yes. And Daniel Bryan's legacy still lives. 
So, and you could see the crowd doing it as well, which was great. And uh, I know Daniel Bryan was probably watching that at home with a big smile on his face. But uh, in this supposed now feud between the Bella Twins, and hopefully this is a proper feud, not a, not a fucking Jerry Springer commercial or a Jerry Springer show, like, like it was a month ago. Brie Bella gets, draws first blood. Not literally, but draws first, first blood in the feud between her and Nikki. So, now, Slater Gator, which is uh, Heath Slater and uh, Titus O'Neil, beat uh, Los Matadores. And why they, the, the match was taking place at ringside, JBL got a nice little visitor at the commentary's booth. Adam Rose and the bunny. And JBL, that look on his face, like, I want to quit my life. Right now, seriously. Uh, one thing led to another during the match. It wasn't like a good tag team match, to be honest. Uh, but uh, the Matadores made a mistake and Slater wrote up one of the Matadores to get the victory 1, 2, 3. To be honest with you, as far as the Matadores is concerned, they should just go back to being Primo and Epico. Because that's who they are. But WWE decided to give them a Matadores gimmick. I mean, the reincarnation of El Matador from what Tito Santana used to be, which I'm sure you already know. But they should just go back to being Primo and Epico, if you ask me. But that's my opinion. Uh, Titus grabs uh, El Torito and proceeds to beat him up at least tries to beat him up and then he sees Adam Rose goes to take the swipe of Rose Rose ducks him Titus goes over the top rope uh, Slater gets distracted Ross Matador is coming in do a double team on Slater and then uh, Slater's laid out in the ring the bunny goes to the top rope again and does a bunny splash now, I told you this last time. The bunny, from what I've heard, it's not true. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's been confirmed. But the bunny, from what I've heard, is Prince Devon. You know, one of WWE's newest signings. I believe that's the bunny. I don't know if it's true or not. I don't know if it's been confirmed. But that could be him. But anyway, the bunny goes up on the top rope and does a splash. And splashes, uh, the bunny splash, if you will, on... Uh, on uh, what I call it, Heath Slater. <laughs> Need I say more on that? You know, God Almighty. Uh, big Show coming off knocking out uh, Rusev. Rusev comes out and starts talking about what happened on SmackDown, getting knocked out, and calling Big Show a coward, well Lana did anyway, calls Big Show a coward and this, that and the other. Big Show comes out and interferes. They show the footage of what happened on SmackDown between him and Rusev and the uh, the knockout. Uh, and then Rusev challenges him and then Big Show comes in at the ring but Rusev leaves. And then Lana goes back up, goes back up the aisle, him and Lana go back up the aisle. But Big Show turned round and saw, sees the Russian flag, and grabs, touches the Russian flag, you know, plays with Rusev a little bit, and then pulls it down, much to the despair of Rusev and Lana. Literally, just grabs out of it, it's a big flag, and just pulls the fucking thing down, in one fell swoop, which obviously pissed off Rusev, and the more. You know, Rusev tried to get back in the ring and that, and Big Show just flings him back out again. Uh, but fuck me, it was great. And I could see Rusev in there, Big Show, having a match at Helm the Cell. This US versus Russia thing. But if this happens, uh, Big Show, uh, Rusev rather has got his hands full with the Big Show. Because let's face it, all right, he's beating the world's strongest man. You know, he's beaten the world's strongest man. He's beaten uh, Jack Swagger, but them two are not in the level of a big show. This guy's f seven feet tall, five hundred pounds, so he's got his hands full with the big show. Now, 
AJ Lee faces Alicia Fox, and thanks to Paige, again, Alicia Fox beats AJ Lee, thanks to Paige. And Paige proceeds to put the beat down and makes a statement at the end of the match with AJ Lee. And it says the belt and this, that, and the other. Will this feud ever end between these two? I don't know. It'll probably, if it does end, it'll probably end at, uh, nah, I on the cell October 26th. It's just fucking ridiculous, to be honest. I mean, I don't know if Paige still does it. I didn't really take any notice, but Paige skipping down at ringside and all that. Please just end this feud. And there's rumours about AJ leaving, so I'm guessing if this match takes place again, AJ versus Paige for the Divas title, I'm guessing, you know, the Divas Championship will change hands again and Paige will become the champion. God almighty. Anyway. Anyway, Alicia Fox probably has now a title shot thanks to Paige against AJ Lee. Future Divas Championship match. US champion Sheamus is in action against Damian Sandow or Damian Mizdow or whatever the heck you want to call him or Mr. Stooge. This was just a one sided match for me. Uh, Sheamus beating the crap out of him. You know, Miz has to get involved, backfires, and uh, Sheamus beats Sandow as you would expect. And apparently on SmackDown, there's going to be a tag team match between uh, the Intercontinental Champion teaming up with the US Champion versus Miz now and, and the Miz. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens on that on SmackDown. Tune in to SmackDown this week to find out. This SmackDown this week to find out, and I'll talk. And on the podcast, I'll talk about SmackDown later in the main points. Now Hogan comes out, and once again he addresses the Susan G. Komen partnership with WWE. Apparently, for th- I think it's for the third straight year, WWE are teaming up with Susan G. Komen for the breast cancer awareness thing. They did it before; they're doing it again. And Hogan comes out like he's been doing since he's been back in WWE. He promotes things, you know, he promotes WrestleMania, he promotes the Hall of Fame, and he, he's promoted SummerSlam, he's, what, I mean, he's the promotion burial candidate, so to speak, now. I mean, if, if you can call it that, I mean, Jesus Christ. But... He comes out and talks, not much to talk about, he just comes out and addresses the Susan G. Coleman Foundation and promotes it and puts it over, so to speak. Now to the main event, which sees John Cena, Dean Ambrose versus Kane and Randy Orton and I guess considering what happened during the match. It was a good tag team match, by the way. Not the best tag team match I've seen, but it was a good tag team match nonetheless. Uh, one thing leads to another, and uh, Dean Ambrose gets Randy Orton in and hits Dirty Deeds on him, goes for the one, two, three, but out of nowhere, Rollins comes in and all hell breaks loose. And then, since Rollins basically got owned earlier on in the night by Dean Ambrose and John Cena, it was probably only fitting that De- that Seth Rollins gets his own back at the end of the night and curve stomps D- Dean Ambrose on the uh, Money in the Bank briefcase and takes out Cena and it leaves with Seth with Dean Ambrose lying in the uh, lying in the uh, floor, so to speak, lying on the canvas with Rollins, Orton, and Kane standing tall over this fallen body. And then Raw R- R- goes off the air. What will happen next week? Ch- I don't know. Tune into Raw. Tune into SmackDown this Friday, and I'll talk about SmackDown later on in the main points. If you want, if you're listening to this on uh, the podcast episode 27 of the podcast, I'll talk about that later on. But uh, yeah, a pretty good Raw, better than last week's. Uh, once again, Dean Ambrose stealing the show and Dolph Ziggler. And uh, 
I would give this a seven. I would, I would give this a seven. Hope you enjoyed that little audio there about the raw main points. Um, all the raw actually, and uh, yeah, pretty decent effort there. But now we go from raw, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to talk about this, the TNA main points. Now TNA kicked off this week with Austin Aries. Austin Aries mentions winning the New York City Gold Rush and says that last week he won the right to challenge any champion in TNA. Aries teases an interactive experience. He asks if he should challenge Gail Kim for the Knockouts Championship. Maybe he'll challenge the Wolves in the two-on-one handicap match for the tag titles. Or maybe he'll challenge Samoa Joe for the X Championship. Samoa Joe interrupts. Joe says that Aries should challenge him because he is the most dominant champion in TNA and Aries accepts the challenge. Match begins. Aries and Joe battle back and forth until Joe catches Aries with a running back elbow. Joe takes the advantage. He battles Aries into the corner and nails a series of hard rights. Joe hits an insiguri and then attempts a muscle buster from the top rope. But Aries battles out. Aries attempts a missile dropkick but Joe sidesteps leaving Aries to crash and burn. Aries is able to mount enough offense to lock in a leg lock. Aries be- breaks the hold and continues to tackle Joe's leg. He attempts a suicide dive but Joe catches him with a stiff kick to the head. Samoa Joe regains control and hooks Aries with a ne- rear naked choke. Aries drops to the mat turning Joe's hold into a jawbreaker. Joe kicks out of the pin and Aries attempts the last chance if that's right. I apologize if that's wrong but you know where I'm going with that. It's Aries move. Aries breaks the hold. He and Joe begin Again, a rapid fire exchange that sees Joe drop Aries with an inverted atomic drop. Aries connects with a suicide dive and a top rope missile drop kick. Aries counters with a brain buster just before the three. Joe kicks out. Aries attempts a second last chancery, but Joe counters into a rear naked choke and Aries taps out to allow Joe the victory. Now, this was a great match as it is always is with these two. Um, not their best match. If you want to see a great match between these two, go back to a Slammiversary pay-per-view and you'll be thoroughly entertained but uh, yeah a good match to start impact Gail Kim and Havoc for the knockouts title Gail Kim makes her way to the ring but Havoc ambushes her from behind Gail tries fighting back but Havoc sends her crashing headfirst into the ring post Gail sends Havoc face first into the steel steps then she fusely unloads with a series of rights Havoc overpowers Gail and drops her onto the guardrail Gail comes back again this time connecting with a big kick to the head as Havoc stumbles Gail fa- flies off the apron catching Havoc and with a continued series of rights. A little tongue tied there. Havoc lifts Gale and locks in a hybrid hold combining a bear hug with a hammerlock. Havoc rams Gale's shoulder into the ring post before ga- powering Gale onto the floor. Gale clutches her shoulder and withstands the- and shouts in pain. Trainers emerge to help Gale to the back while Havoc admires her destruction. The match never started making this scheduled match a no contest. Just one other quick thing as well. This match in the series between T- Team 3D, Austin, uh, Team 3D, the Wolves and the Hardy Boys will finish next week on Impact with a full metal mayhem. That's right, Teenage heads at the TLC next week, so who will be the World Tag Team Champions? I guess we'll find out next week, or this coming Wednesday, on Impact. Bobby Roode enters the ring. He mentions being the longest reigning world champion in TNA's history. Then he references the old saying, you're only as good as your last match. He mentions that he lost a match against Lashley two weeks ago then he failed that he failed to reclaim the TNA Heavyweight Championship of the World. He invites Lashley to the ring. Lashley enters with MVP and Kenny King in tow. Lashley Root says the World Championship means everything to him. He asks Lashley for one more chance. Lashley moves in for the handshake but MVP interrupts shoving Lashley out of his way. MVP says Lashley answer is no. The main event was the scheduled the, the, the scheduled knockouts championship. Now I want to applaud TNA for putting the, the knockouts in the Manner than two knockouts who can go. Gail Kim and Havoc. It's just a shame WWE can't do this. But anyway, Gail enters the ring and grabs the mic. She yells, Havoc, you may have taken me down, but you haven't taken me out. With Havoc on the ramp, Gail attacks Havoc, battles back with ease. Havoc dominates the knockout champion again. Havoc locks.
locks in the bear hug hammerlock. She rams Gil into two turnbuckles before tossing her into the ring. Havoc controuts Gil's shoulder, but Gil doesn't tap. Havoc lifts Gil only to drop her with the shoulder breaker. Havoc locks in another submission, but Gil fights off with a series of knees to Havoc's face. Gil charges Havoc, but she's taken down with a shoulder block. Havoc attempts a leg drop, but Gil rolls out of the way and sends Havoc face first into the turnbuckle. Gil leaves the ring to lock in a signature figure fall on the ring post. Havoc screams. Gil attempts eat defeat, but Havoc counters and locks in another bear hug hammerlock combo. She powers Gil to the mat before lifting her with a choke slam. Havoc covers Gil to become the new knockout champion. Your winner is Havoc. Be interested to see what happens next during all this. Tune in to Wednesday to find out what's next for Havoc. The Smackdown main points, ladies and gentlemen. John Cena kicked off Smackdown this week. Just when it looked as if John Cena and Dean Ambrose were ready to shake hands and call a truce in their mutual desire to get retribution on shit on Seth Rollins, Copper Kane, Randy Orton and Rollins himself interrupted on the Titan Tron. After pointing some insulting things that the 15-time world champion and WWE's most unstable superstar had supposedly said about each other in the past, Kane challenged them to prove their new piece accord against the combined force of him and Viper in SmackDown's main event. Oh my god. Despite the fact that the Miz assaulted Sheamus with a, ch- a chair outside the ring in the height of their tag team showdown, Dolph Ziggler evaded his opponent's two-on-one trickery to be to best even Damian Miz out with the zigzag. After the bell, the Celtic warrior was unable to get his hands on the slippery awesome one. He wellied a chair of his own on the money maker's unfortunate stunt double. The world's largest athlete came before the WWE Universe to apologize to the Russian people for their inadvertently offending them with the pull down of the Russian flag on Monday Night Raw. Yawn. When Lala, when Lana and Rusev demand a personal apology though, the giant made it clear that he had offended the two of them on purpose. This brought a vicious beatdown from the hero of the Russian Federation, one that only served to infuriate the gigantic superstar and send Rusev into retreat. Tune in to Monday Night Raw this coming, well tonight in fact, because it's Rusev one-on-one with the big show. John Cena and Dean Ambrose remain obsessed with individually getting payback on Seth Rollins, but they turn their focus to battling Corporate Kane and Randy Orton in SmackDown's tag team main event. When Mr. Money in the Bank emerged in the height of the hard-fought match, however, Cena abandoned his tag team partner to get a brawl going with his foe that stretched it all the way up to the back. The actions of the 15-town world champion left a war-torn Ambrose to face the combined aggression of his opponents alone, and that the fact that the double team brought an end to the match by disqualification couldn't have mattered less. Less even. After Kane hit a choke slam on the unstable superstar, Randy Orton finished him off with an RKO, but the time Cena returned to the ring, the damage had been done. Tune in to Monday Night Raw this week to find out Ambrose's response, because I'm pretty sure he's got a response. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to shut a promo on, and I'll be back after this quick break with my main points of the world of wrestling, and not only that, the main event of this episode of the podcast, the Colleen Masters Index. So stay tuned for that. See you in a bit. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Galdem Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? Ooh, welcome back to the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Uh, I'm just flicking through here, looking at the... uh, you know, the views and my opinions in the world of wrestling, so what I can, I can see if there's anything they are worth talking about. Well, first of all, the latest thing related tease comes from the legendary wrestler himself. While Facebook promoting his appearance at the big event next month in Flushing, New York, seeing that some big news is on the horizon. So, if you're in New York, make sure you get to that uh, place right there and then in Flushing, New York. Should be a hoot. Now, I've just found something here. 
that I need to bring to the attention, okay? Hogan threatens nephew of a bisexual reality show. Oh my god. TMC bl- published a story about Hulk Hogan being upset that his nephew is pushing for a reality show about finding the perfect threesome. Here is, an, here is something for the article. Hulk Hogan is vowing to drop the legal hammer on a nephew who is pushing a reality show about finding the perfect threesome. Telling TMZ Sports he is a disgrace to the Hogan name. The man behind the reality show, Plug or Paul or Create or whatever, is David Borlea, who calls himself King David Hogan. A pro MMA fighter who last stepped in the ring or in a cage back in 2012 and claims to be Hogan's nephew. King David is trying to shop a reality show called My Girlfriend Wants a Girlfriend in which he sorts through 16 different ladies to find the perfect addition to their freaky sexual lifestyle. Oh my god, what the f- fuck. I hope Hogan pulls the plug on that because I don't think any- I think anyone with a brain doesn't want to see that on a, on a TV sh- on a TV or doesn't want to see that full stop. I mean, that, that sounds like something for the porn channel. Man, for real? I mean, Jesus Christ. Christ. Anyway, I'll leave you guys to have your own opinions about that. Bloody hell. Luke Harper has changed his Twitter name to uh, dash dot dash thing and wrote the following after last night's Smackdown. And now I hunt. Be interested to see where they go with this. WWE NXT Women's Champion Charlotte is cutting promos at this week's NXT Live event about how she wants AJ Lee's WWE Divas Championship. I think everybody wants WWE Divas Championship. Question Question is, I just hope they don't treat Charlotte like they did with Paige. Need I say more? Yes, go to. Right. One more piece of news before I move on. William Regal will be in WWE's. Well, we'll be at the WWE tapings, the tapings this coming week in Brooklyn, Philadelphia, to elevate to evaluate talents that are being brought in for tryouts. Speaking of tryouts, Kevin Steen is expected to have his new WWE. Ring name soon, oh for fuck's sake. Oh my god. Oh no, I feel the pipe bomb coming on in the few we- in, in the upcoming weeks. That's that's got bad news written all over it. He could be in the ring on NXT TV before the end of twenty fourteen. <sighs> For fuck's sake, WWE, just keep him in it, Kevin Steen, man. For fuck Oh god I could say I like I say, look out for a pipe, look out for a pipe bomb in the near future, in the upcoming episodes, because I feel one coming. For fuck's sake, WWE, just keep him fucking Kevin Steen, man. For fuck's sake, <sighs> Jesus. Uh, Gail Kim is injured, by the way. Uh, going back to uh, what she said, uh, Gail Kim after the match, I believe after the match with Havoc this past Wednesday on an Impact, Gail Kim is out injured, very serious injury. So hopefully. You know, so get well soon. Gail on that. Former WWE announcer has been working out of TNA headquarters in Nashville and revealed on Twitter he will be working with a new weekly YouTube show with Rock ta- with Rockstar Spud. I'm with Spud. We will be released every Wednesday afternoon with Spud giving his thoughts on last on that night's Impact Wrestling episode. There's no word yet on when Matthews will be debuting on TNA TV. So Josh Matthews is now a member of the t- TNA roster the commentary roster if you will be nice to see how you be used uh, just a quick thing that I want to bring up TNA's new overseas TV deals they announced TV deals in Malaysia and Singapore so congratulations to them on that one and apparently they've got like a contract up until January on Spike as well that's what I've heard I don't know if that's true or not uh, but that's what I've heard so looks like TNA is desperately trying to survive and let's hope they do survive quite frankly right ladies and gentlemen that is the end of this episode of the wrestling matters podcast episode 27 but i am now going to leave you with the full interview that i did the main event of this episode with colleen masters she talks about her career she talks about her stuff on youtube as well her let's play stuff and also she retaliates to being slagged off by jezebeth on her interview as well i give her an opportunity to say a piece and that's what i'm all about on this show so fair is fair even playing field so i hope you enjoyed the interview i'm gonna leave it there until next time episode 28 hopefully i'll have another interview by then if not we'll just have to w- wait and see but uh yeah episode 28 next week hope you enjoyed this episode enjoy the colleen masters interview i will leave you with that until next time guys peace out ladies and gentlemen my name is anthony walker the hd the the day the host of the wrestling matters podcast and i've got another interview lined up Yes, two interviews in one week.
<laughs> you seen the Jezebeth interview last week? Now, let me break this down for you guys. I put the Jezebeth one up on, on YouTube, and I got a reply back. Here's the reply right now. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Colleen Masters. Hello. How are you? Uh, I'm really good, thank you. Yes, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, yeah, you basically uh, said that you didn't like particularly being like being slagged off and that, and I gave you an opportunity, and you've accepted the opportunity to come on, and uh, we're going to give you an opportunity to respond to what Jezebel said, or as you called her on Facebook, Jezebel. That is my preferred nickname for her, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, this is going to be interesting. So we'll kick off this interview basically as we see it and basically go back to the basics. Uh, what got you into this professional wrestling world? What was the main thing that grabbed that attention and bro hooked you into this world of professional wrestling? Well, actually, my uh, best friend from school, he was a huge WWF fan when it was WWF at the time. Yeah. And uh, he would not shut up about it, so I decided to give it a try, and then I fell in love with it from there. Um, and I actually co uh, collected magazines, and I came across a uh, article for a training school in England, because uh, uh, I didn't know they had training schools over here, and uh, I pretty much went from there. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm pretty much the same with you. I mean, I, go, I mean, my wrestling. Me being a wrestling fan goes back to the early 90s with the, the when it was WWF, thank you, World Wildlife Fund. Uh, uh, going back to the WWF days and that. Who was the guy Who was the guy or girl for that matter that, that grabbed your attention? Uh, his, the, name, his name is Daniel. He doesn't do wrestling himself. He, uh, he actually gone off it, but his mum absolutely loves yeah. Triple H. Yeah. Triple H? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean the guy that got me into world to the to the professional wrestling world and got me hooked on wrestling and was Hulk Hogan, the immortal mm -hmm. one. And the minute I turned on the TV, hooked Hulk Hogan, I was like, I'm hooked. But uh, if I sorry, yeah, go, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna on. say if I had to say um um because I uh, like I said uh H was the first one, but if I had to say who really got me like proper yeah. Oh, this is what I want to do. It was actually seeing the match between Trish Stratus and Lita for the first time. Their first one, uh, I mean. Yeah, the very first. Yeah, that that's understandable. I mean, two of the greatest divas of all time in WWF's history or WWE's history, whatever you see it. But yeah, two of the greatest divas of all time, and it's understandable. I mean, just they just they were just both great, and Lita came a long way considering where she started and everything, and. Yep, two of the greatest WWE Divas champions or women's champions, whatever you see fit of all time. Uh, how did, where did you train? Um, I actually first started in NWA Hammerlock uh, in Essex. Yeah. Because um, it was around the corner of my land, so it was quite easy to get to. And then cool. seven months after that, I joined Drop Kicks. Ah, Drop Kicks, yes. Uh, I had a lot yeah, of. I met Jezebeth. Yes. <laughs> Seven years later. Yep, Jezebeth uh, trained there as well. Uh, what year did you start the training? I started when I was 17, so that's almost 11 years ago now. Oh, blimey. <laughs> Holy moly. Go back to my, I mean, I'm, I'm 30 years old now, just all these new, you young people. I mean, Jezebeth being 19 now when she started when she was 14 just makes me feel that little bit old. Well, I'm, I'm two years behind you as far as fight is concerned, so. Yes, yes. Fair enough, absolutely. Uh, who have you worked with besides Jezebeth, of course? Uh, who have you worked with in, um, your career, in your wrestling career? Well, my debut was against a girl called Jade. Yeah. Uh, I've had many matches with uh, this other wrestler called Lucy Clayden. Yeah. Uh, both of which I think are retired now. Uh, I've also I wrestled. I did a match. No, two, I've done two matches at PGWA. Yeah. Uh, um, one of which faced against Pippa Levine in a tag match. Right. Uh, 
I've done loads of things. I'm uh, trying to remember every one. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's. I've only got the Jezebel matches and the Brookie matches on YouTube, as far as I know, because most of my matches happened when it was recorded on VHS. Oh right, yeah, yeah, those were the days, VHS days. Yeah. <laughs> now they're all DVDs and that. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you have you been able to have the opportunity to wrestle abroad? Um, no, I haven't yet. But I was offered actually to wrestle in Italy about a month or two months after my major operation I have had uh, had done. So obviously I haven't been able to go over there yet. Oh, operation. Uh, on, on what may oh. I ask? Oh yeah, um, I have a uh, lifelong illness uh, called Crohn's disease. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Didn't realize, it didn't realise it was hereditary until I was told I had it because my mum had it before me. Well, you, well yeah, you never take uh, you never tend to take illnesses seriously until someone really tells you it's or you find out yourself it's it, it's a a serious matter. Uh, yes, yeah, I mean, wow. Who trained you? Uh, my first trainer was a guy called Tank, and uh, uh, since then uh, it's been Frank Weimer followed by John Ritchie. Mm. Uh, uh, this might be a, a bit of a deaf question to ask, but what did you learn from them? I, I gathered you learned the basics and how to wrestle, and but what did you learn that helped you in your career up until this point? Uh, everything really. I mean, like you said, the basics and how to wrestle, and also the uh, well the Politics behind everything as well is always good to know, so you know where you stand. Yes, that I think. I mean, because yeah, wrestling is a politic world, as as we well know it behind the scenes, and that's so you've got to know. I suppose that could be, although it doesn't get taught that much with with their wrestling training nowadays. It's it's mainly did it just focus on the basics. They don't mainly training the last scene at least anyway it tends to just focus on the training and the in-ring stuff and everything they never te teach you what happens behind the scenes and that at least oh, well, that, that, that's from my that's, perspective anyway well that's where um uh, my trainer john he uh he basically only wants the best of the best so he teaches us everything there is to know so we we can be the best of the best sounds like an excellent trainer hey nothing wrong with having the best uh as well right I suppose we'll jump into it as you well know I'll come back to all the training things and everything else in a second as you well know uh, last week I had Jezebeth on the show and uh, she said some I would say derogatory remarks towards you uh, which weren't very flattering uh, I'm used to it yeah uh, and she basically called you out f for a match and she not only called you out she called Destiny out too uh, but she mainly called you out and like I said I had some derogatory remarks towards you and care to respond? Well she knows I've been sidelined for the last three years so yes. she thinks I'm going to be an easy target because I can't respond to her um, challenges currently but what she fails to realise is that um, she's not exactly a favourite among other wrestlers, considering she practically hates everybody, and it does get boring, her insults, hence why I call her Jezebel. Yeah. Uh, is she, I, mean, I mean, last week she was she was okay. She was an absolute pleasure to have on the show. Uh, do you, what do you see in the future with when you eventually get back in... To what you do and get back into the wrestling and everything. I mean, she basically called you out for a match, basically, and uh, she said she wanted another match with you and that. Where do you see this going? I mean, is she, is she going to be high on your list? Well, on top of the list, rather, when you come back, or do you have other plans before you get to her, or, or, or before you plan on getting to her? Well, I plan to finally become a Dropkick Swoons champion one day because. Uh, um, I was on the verge of getting a championship before my illness kicked in, so that's my number one goal. But I suppose uh, trying to shut up uh, Jezebeth once and for all would be up there as well, because, like I said, 
I mean, yes, maybe she can be nice to some people, but when she holds a grudge against you, she will never let it go, and her insults are just repetitive. And no matter how many times I beat her, she will... Uh, unless I get some sellotape and tape it to her mouth, I don't think she would ever shut up, to be honest. Wow. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, going back to your training, come off Jezebeth for a minute, going back to your training... Uh, what was it like to train under the the names that you mentioned? It really good. It, um, w when I first uh, started, I was very a very shy person. I I didn't speak up. I was very shaky about things, and uh, also it was very recent after my, uh, the passing of my mother. So to have someone to um, look up to and help train me was uh, very inspiring and as I went from trainer to trainer I just learned so m many more new things and uh, and uh, I would like to think of John in particular as a really close friend of mine now so oh, a mean shy person and I'm guessing that was would I, would I be right in saying that could be lack of confidence it was yes and and these guys helped your confidence and help well basically get you up there to that confidence level, yeah, it's, it's not nice to be, it's not nice when you don't have the confidence and everything, because you really don't know what you're doing, but when someone can help you get your confidence back, it's, it helps a great deal. Uh, what is, going off you for a minute, what is your take on the WWE product? Uh, to be honest, I stopped watching that, I'm more uh, of TNA these days. Oh, TNA, or oh, what's your take on the TNA product, considering the news that we've, well, the news that I've heard a lot. Um, I think that TNA is a better product than WWE. It's in the women's division uh, specifically. Absolutely. But, uh, mostly because they actually, um, no offence to any WWE divas, because I'm sure m m the majority of them actually know how to wrestle, but uh, the TNA knockouts uh, actually show they know how to wrestle a lot more. They're, they're given more leeway to do what they want. Absolutely. Uh, believe you me, on this podcast, I've been very vocal about the WWE Divas division. I have been very, very vocal. Uh, one particular example, and I'll keep on saying it because it's true, uh, the way they used Paige after yep. after WrestleMania, uh, when she made a debut on Raw, won the Women's Championship off AJ Lee, and then basically was the belt holder for when AJ returned, basically. As it was clear, because when AJ came back, the same thing happened. Except AJ, it was AJ on the on the end of winning the title, except for Paige. And yeah, I've been very, very vocal, and you are absolutely correct in what you say. I believe that the TNA Knockouts division is far better than the WWE Divas division. Not taking anything in the way for the NXT Women's division as well that they have, but. At, at the moment, right now, as far as Divas Division and Knockouts Division, I will go. I totally agree with you, and the Knockouts Division is ten times better. Uh, who is your favourite knockout? Uh, you like I, watch? Well, um, I would say Mickey uh, Mickey James is my ultimate favourite uh, knockout because um, I first saw her in WWE, and then obviously mm. she went to uh, TNA afterwards. But I know she was in TNA before then too. Yes, but. If I was to say solely TNA, I would say, uh, I, I mean, I don't know, there's so many, I mean, uh, Velvet Sky has grown since when I first saw her, she's yeah. improved a lot. Yeah, I agree um, with that, I agree. Yeah, and, you know, people like ODB, um, Awesome Con, Gal Kim, loads, uh, loads of them, in fact, I can't think of any one of them that's uh, as bad as, say, Kelly Kelly. <laughs> Someone I really don't like in the ring, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly Kelly does get uh, hate on a lot from uh, WWE fans in particular and wrestling fans in general as well. That she's not that she was not very good in the WWE ring, but yeah, I agree. I mean, it's very hard to choose because I mean, on the roster, like you said, you've had on well the on the uh, knockout roster that like, you've had uh, ODB, Velvet's guys improved, Angelina Love is back. Uh, this new girl's just showed up as well, Havoc. Uh, Gail yeah. Kim. Yeah, it's pretty hard to choose, man. 
who, who, who could be the the best. But I agree, the Divas division at the moment is well, the Knockouts division at the moment is ten times better than the WWE Divas division, and the WWE Divas division seriously needs to improve. Do you have? Yeah. I was going to say, uh, not meaning to hate on Kelly Kelly, but um, uh, I remember seeing one thing that um, she was getting strangled and she was screaming, and I know for a fact that it, that that did not look right at all because I've been strangled before, and I know for, I know for a fact you cannot breathe when you've yeah. been strangled. So how on earth she screamed, I don't know. Yeah. Which is why I've been put off, you yeah. know, that division. Probably WWE booking at its blatant best there, ladies and gentlemen. WWE logic, as we all will to know. I mean, the booking at the moment in WWE, in my opinion, is very, very poor. But like I said, I mean, don't be afraid to say what you got to say. I mean, we, I very commend uh, pipe bombs on this show and people telling the truth and that. And like I said, this, you're not the only one who's been very vocal about Kelly Kelly uh, and her poor ability in a wrestling ring. It, have you? What, what companies have you competed besides Dropkick, of course? Uh, what other companies have you competed for? Um, well, like I said, PGWA was one. Yeah. Uh, I've also I wrestled for CWC for like one show, and I did about five shows in this company called ACW. Yeah. Um, uh, which is, I wouldn't say it's not quite near me, but it's a. Uh, sort of like Newton Keynes area, which is close, but ironically I was living in London at the time, so I still had to travel quite a bit to get there. Uh, but, uh, oh, and I also did a charity show, Dropkicks versus Hammerlock as well. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, they, so, uh, they always yeah. take, they, they yeah. always t- when, you, when, you, when you combine one promotion with another promotion, and have like one big show, they tend to, it tends to be a lot of fun because I guess it's more interesting to the to the audience and the and the fan and the fans and that, and especially to me as well if I was a fan. Uh, would there be any companies out there that you would like to compete in, if if you were given the opportunity to compete in? Well, I'd like to um, finally go to Italy uh, to com- uh, compete in the company. I should know the name of this company, but right now I'm having a a blonde moment, I can't think of it. <laughs> but, uh, I th- that's I gonna, th- that is going to actually bug me now. I, I, I bet you yeah, I'm going to remember as soon as I, uh, I come off the podcast, I'm going to remember the name. <laughs> but, uh, but other than that, I'd, any company really, uh, yeah. especially in America, that's what one of my ultimate dreams to, uh, even if it was just to wrestle once, just go to America and... and compete in America. Yeah. That's every, but that's, I mean, that's every, and that seems to be every wrestler's dream, especially in the British wrestling scene. Uh, that's every wrestling person's dream, whether it's country it is. Everybody wants to go to America and compete for either maybe an indie promotion out there or the big, or the big two, WWE and TNA. Uh, do you, can you see British wrestling, females in particular, can you see them making it? Can you see more making it over in the American yes. scene? Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, uh, even though America has kind of taken over the wrestling industry yes. in the sense of making it popular again, it was once popular by British standards. So uh, we're making a comeback, definitely. So we can uh, definitely, uh, more of us can definitely make it in America. I have no doubt. Yeah. Following the footsteps of Paige and and people like that and Layla and yeah, it'll yeah. be, be just interesting to see. I mean, if anybody needs if anybody needs the divas that can, you know, the, and the talent at the moment at the moment, like I said, is WWE. It's, they need, they definitely need some wrestle some wrestlers and I could all I've got to say about that is is thank God they've got the NXT uh, women's division because. That could be like a platform as well, but Mark, I have a concern of what, how they're going to be used, the the ladies in the women's division on the NXT. I mean, if if if, if, this, if the WWE Divas division standard is where it is now, you know, where where their standard is going to be when they once they get moved up to the show, to that division and everything beyond Raw and SmackDown. I hope they very improve it, but. It's like I said. It's very hard. To, it's very hard to uh, predict where WWE and what direction they go to. Uh, yeah, uh, going back. 
What was the moment, as a fan growing up, what was the moment in that wrestling? What was the like? I mean, was there a match or a pay per view that got you hooked? That got you hooked into the business? Into the business? Well, the uh, the first match I ever saw um, mm. was actually a WWE Heat. I mean, I mean that was far as uh, WWE sh- shows are concerned, uh, or shall I say WWF Heat at the time. Yeah. Um, but uh, and that's what got me hooked into WWF in particular. And it was uh, I can't remember what it was. I know it had Jerry Lynn as one of the uh, competitors, but uh, I can't can't remember who else. But I actually. I uh, used to watch WCW back when it was on Channel 5 because this was before I had Sky. And, uh, um, yeah. But I never really got hooked into that. I only really watched that because I knew it would annoy my best friend because he was WWF all the time and because uh, he wouldn't shut up about it. I thought if I watched the rival company, it might get on his nerves like he was getting on mine. But, uh, um, but then when I started watching WWF, that was the true turning point and I got really really hooked very fast of course i um i watched the uh heat uh which was on really early in the morning and i was supposed to be in bed by then uh because of school and all that but yeah, yeah. i didn't care at the time i was just so hooked yeah yes a lot of a lot of people uh probably not a lot of you got wrestling fans out there know this or listening to the podcast right now wcw um i believe the show was called wcw worldwide was on Channel 4, and yes, and like you correctly say, in the early 2000s as well, WWE was on heat, uh, the Heat program, WWF Heat, was on Channel 4. That yeah. was back when uh, pay-per-views were on Channel 4 late night. I remember that very well, because I remember watching, uh, I think that's about early 2000s, that was actually 2000 onwards as well, if I remember. Uh, I can remember watching uh, Roy Rumble 2000, and... Uh, the Backlash 2000 as well, where Austin returned and Rock won the WWF title that night. And various ones as well, even the Evasion in 2001, with their WWF versus WCW and ECW, which was uh, very probably the best pay-per-view out of that angle. It, well, my opinion anyway. Uh, I agree, definitely. Yeah, because I mean, various other ones in that angle were okay and everything, but it, I, I just... It started off well that angle, and then it, as many people will probably tell you as well, many other wrestling fans, it, it kind of dived out, and then that's why it. That's why I probably ended at Survivor Series because it was just. I mean, they should have brought Sting and Ric Flair and all the other WCW. I mean, two of the biggest WCW draws in that group, uh, with the WCW group at least, were Booker T and DDP, so, yeah. which was no disrespect to the other talent because. They were they were great as well, but you know, like I say, the two big draws were Booker T and DDP. But like I say, everybody's been very vocal about how much of a clusterfuck that that angle was, which was a shame because it, it could have made uh, big money. But I think that was just Vince McMahon's excuse to bury ECW and WCW. Uh, yeah, I mean, did you? I mean, did you ever get to watch WCW? You know the Nitro program, or or was it just the uh, the worldwide program? I can't remember. I think it was just. I think it was but, just a worldwide program. Yeah, but I I have got Nitro, uh, one Nitro video, uh, uh, yeah, VCR somewhere that I've watched once. Yeah, I just thought maybe. I mean, because that was in 2000. That was when uh, WCW was slowly dying. Yep. And even though it started, even though some people say that WCW company, the death of the WCW company, died in in '98, started in the whole the whole downfall started in '98. I disagree, because uh, they were heart round about '98, '99, '97 time with the old NWO angle and that. Uh, but it definitely died out in in 2000 onwards. Although although there was, there was some interesting parts to the product. You just knew it was, it was, it was on the verge of collapse, and eventually it did collapse in 2001 with the all, the whole uh, takeover and the simulcast, where Shane McMahon pops out and and takes over the company. Uh, going back to uh, 
your wrestling career, the female wrestling career, besides Jezebeth, you've already, you've obviously made that clear. Like I said, I'll get back to that in a second. Who would you like to wrestle when you eventually get... Is, is there another person or another female divas out there that you may not have wrestled yet and you would like to have a, a bash at or... Uh, well, I would... Out of, out of the people I have wrestled, I'd like to wrestle Brookie, uh, this girl Brookie again because I have yet to beat her and in the last match I had, which was actually involved kind of backstabbed me and, and uh, it was elimination triple threat and uh, yeah. after I eliminated Jezebeth she backstabbed me and eliminated me by attacking me from behind and stuff which I should have seen coming but uh, I was just focused on Jezebeth at the time but out of, out of people who I haven't wrestled yet I, I don't know I mean there's so many like uh, from all over the world that I would like to wrestle but I'd, I'd say I've always wondered what it would be like to wrestle someone that I, uh, that I looked up to, like, say, for example, Mickey James. That would oh. be cool. Yeah, the uh, the proverbial dream match. Yeah. Yeah, if you will, yeah. I mean, I mean, everybody, everybody, when you step into wrestling business, including me, I've done some wrestling myself, and, you know, when you first start, well, you first start and everything, and, you first start competing in that. You want to work with the experienced people because not only can you work with them, you can also learn from them too. You can also pick their brains while you're having the matches and that. And, and hopefully that will help you improve your career and benefit you in the long run as well. And a lot of people are doing that as well. But it's just a case of thinking, you never know, maybe she'll come, maybe she'll come over to England one day. Uh do you see your? I mean, what does? I mean, what championships have you won? Have you won in like uh, championships? No, I've been very close to winning, but I haven't actually won a championship yet. Although uh, at one point, I, I think it was, I, I can't remember what match it was, but uh, the announcer um, mentioned me as a former champion. And in my head, I was thinking, when did that happen? But, but no, not yet. <laughs> Yeah, not quite yet, yeah, ring announcer. Not quite. But, uh, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, what? I would the, like to, I would like to, um, I've competed in many championship matches, but, yeah. Your day has, your proverbial day has not come yet to be a champion, and hope, well, and like I said, hopefully it will come. I mean, everybody strives to be a champion in the wrestling business. The promoters for the respective companies that you worked for, what would they like to work with as promoters? R really, really good. Uh, I mean, uh, like everyone's different, obviously, but uh, yeah, no I doubt. think I was more nervous with the, PG the PGWA uh, one because I actually wrestled the promoter of the company in the main event. So that was very nerve-wracking, especially when... It was my first match coming back after the first time I was ill, uh, which I didn't know was Crohn's related at the time. And, uh, yeah, that was very, very nerve-wracking, definitely. I would imagine so. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you're just not wrestling anybody. All right, you're wrestling somebody in the ring and everything. You've got an opponent on the other end. But I, can ima I, gotta imagine, I can't imagine what it must be like if it's the promoter you're actually wrestling. I mean... You know, usually when you wrestle, you want the promoter to watch the match and see if it was good for them to benefit their company. But it's going to be it's going to be a lot different if you're wrestling the actual promoter in the ring as well. I mean, I'd, I'd be nervous too if it was me. But I wrestled the promoter, even though I wanted to get his head, even though I wanted to probably get my hands around the guy, the guy or the person's neck. But yeah, I mean, that's got to, that's got to be a lot different to wrestling, you know, normal female wrestlers who are not promoters man I mean yeah I can't imagine that uh, how did you get on? Uh, really well uh, it was uh, definitely exhilarating and the crowd was fantastic unfortunately my team didn't win uh, and neither did uh, 
promotes him actually there was some interference or whatever but um yeah. so it, it, no one really won but it was it i think it went down very well um the fact that i was re- representing team scotland and can't do a scottish accent for the life of me was interesting too <laughs> well, yes it, 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 yeah it's going to be a little bit different like you try and wrestle, you try to represent a country a country in that and you can't do the accent to save the life and everything, and you just realise this is kind of awkward. I'm not Scottish, you know. I'm not wrestling. For, I'm I'm, rest, I'm wrestling here. I'm representing a country that I'm not even from, and everything. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a a little bit weird. What is the longest match that you've had? Longest. Um, that is a good question. <laughs> I don't know. I think. Well, I did a two out of three falls match with Lucy Clayton once. I think that was right. uh, the, lo- uh, the longest because of, yeah, you know, it was two out of three falls. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that was. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't done anything that was like 20 minutes long. I think the, uh, between 10 and 15 minutes, I think. I don't know. Yeah, well, well. Going back a long while, it's been three years since I last wrestled. I don't remember much. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, I would imagine. Yeah, I would imagine because uh, baby people. I mean, the limit at the most to wrestle, at least from what I've gathered as a wrestling fan, the limit to wrestle or the longest limit they have is sixty minutes. You know, the sixty minute Iron Man matches or Iron Woman matches or whatever they have as well. But people don't underestimate how long a two out of three falls is <laughs> in the wrestling. Yeah. They just think it starts two out of three falls and everything. They don't underestimate how long you can be in all the things that needs to work with it and I've seen some horrible two out of three four matches in my career some horrible ones uh, as well uh, also besides that have you gotten to a point I know you've only been in the business a while and you haven't wrestled three years due to your injury and your illness and that have you, did, did, when you were wrestling did you have a point where in your career and I've this goes back to what Bret Hart said about Mr. Perfect as well. I mean, wrestling Mr. Perfect to Bret Hart was like putting on a pair of gloves. You know, he could do that every day of the week. And he enjoyed wrestling him. Have you gotten to a point where you enjoy wrestling that one person and you could wrestle that person or that female every day? Well, yeah, I mean, um, I like to uh, beat up Jezebel every day if I could. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's just it got to the point where uh, I was so stubborn with the whole illness thing that I was prepared to go back in the room way before I was even uh, ready to, mm. and I haven't. I've been good. I've been uh, doing what the doctors tell me. But if they said tomorrow you can go back, I'd be in there like a like a shot, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of wrestlers, uh, especially when they have illnesses and injuries, and they got and they're out for that certain time. It gets to a point where they end up missing what they're doing in the ring and everything, and they're keen to get back in and and pick up where they left off and everything. Yeah, there's a lot of wrestlers that are like that, from what I've seen at least. Uh, I mean, how is your recovery at the moment? So, uh, well, because um, the crisis is very unpredictable, it can come and go uh, whenever. Because, yeah. like I said, it's lifelong. Um, yeah. It, the most annoying part is, though, every time I have a hospital appointment, the doctor says, oh, you, you can uh, go back into wrestling uh, such and such, and then I have another appointment, and then they'll be like, oh, no, actually, we'll change our mind. You have to wait even longer. And it, it just got to the point where I'm not getting my hopes up, but at the same time, I'm uh, just hoping that, uh, that they will change their mind. Yeah. This is going to be a tough question for me to ask you, uh, considering the illness and everything, but... At what at a point are you scared that you might go into a doctor's to your doctor one day and he could he or she is it he or she? Is it he? Yeah, he could turn round and go. You may never wrestle again. Well, when I first, because I have fear of hospitals in general, um, because my mom died in one, I was very fearful that I would get that. Oh, by the way, you can't wrestle ever again. As well as um, just being in the hospital in the first place, but the doctor, um, well, the head surgeon, shall I say, he he actually did everything in his power to make sure that would not be an option, 
as far as not being able to wrestle, he made it so I would have the option to wrestle again. Because, uh, uh, um, uh, yeah, he, uh, I won't go into all medical things, because I, uh, yeah. I don't know what you're saying, but uh, basically uh, the long and short of it is um, the operation itself would have, he would have done something that would have prevented me from wrestling, but because he knows how passionate I am, he did everything he could to um, make sure I can wrestle again, and I almost died on the operating table, but it was worth it because I have that option open now. Yeah, you've got to make that sacrifice to get yourself back into doing what you do. Yeah, uh, yeah it's just that a lot of wrestlers, when they're injury, I'm, I'm pretty sure they would be in the same shoes as well. If they have like an injury or an illness, and they go and see their doctor, they always like turn around and I would imagine a lot of them have that question where, you know, that doctor could probably turn around and say, your career's ended. Basically, it's time to end your career. Or I mean, at the end of the day, I've always said that you shouldn't allow a doctor to end your career. At the end of the day, it should be you that ends your career, not a doctor or anybody else. At the end of the day, end of the day if it's time to retire or it's time to, to pack in wrestling, that should be on your terms, not the doctor's terms. That's just my opinion. Uh, I totally agree, but... But like I say, I mean, at the end of the day, the doctors seem to have a lot, a lot more stroke and seem to get their ways in that. At least that that's from what I've seen, anyway. Uh, do you aim in the future, should you get back in the ring, do you aim to be at the top two? In, yeah, in, absolutely. I'll in, be making up for lost time. Yeah, at the uh, top two, uh, WWE and Tina. Saying about, I don't know, hypothetically speaking, 10 years down the road, you got that opportunity to go to the top two, which would, oh. which, should, they, should they still be around, of course? Uh, well, 10 years down the line, I'll be um, almost 40, so if they would hire uh, a almost 40-year-old female wrestler, yeah. then yes, definitely. All right, I'll, drop it, I'll drop it down then, say about five years Maybe, um, maybe, two, maybe five to four years down the road then. Well, like I say, when I'm back in the, the ring, I'll be making yeah. up for lost time, so yeah. I should be ready by then if yeah. uh, the opportunity yeah. came, a knock, uh, came knocking. But I don't know. I mean, if, if I had the opportunity to choose between WWE or TNA, it would always be TNA because I wouldn't want to go through everything that I've been through and then end up on WWE only to not be used as, as much. Even yeah. if they do offer me, like, whatever amount of money, I'd be like, nope, I've been too, through too much just to do this for that. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm a WWE fan, I'm a WWE fan, good or bad, until the day I die and that, and I'm always going to watch WWE no matter what, no matter how rubbish it is, no matter how crap it could be, no matter how ridiculous it could be, i.e. the Jerry Springer incident with the Bella Twins, the less said about that, the better. <sighs> God almighty. Uh, but... At the end of the day, I just wish to improve the product a little bit. I mean, many. I mean, do you think it's because it's PG? Yeah, I think back when it was the Attitude Era, that uh, that was when it was the best. But then when they kind of uh, dumbed themselves down as far as ratings, it, it just went downhill. And that's why I don't bother watching it anymore, because it was the complete opposite to what I fell in love with. Yes, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, like myself as well... Uh, fell in love with the old Attitude Era and that, and WWE, uh, WWF back in the early days as well with Hogan's, the Bret Hart's, the Ultimate Warriors, the Mr. Perfects, and and that, and then it just built from there right into the Attitude Era with Austin, Rock, DX, i.e. Triple H as well, and that, and then it just, I mean, that was probably the main reason WWE ended up winning the Monday Night Raw was, besides working with ECW as well at the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, who would who do you think is a better promoter, if you can call it a promoter, uh, Vince McMahon or Dixie Carter? Because a lot of people give D Dixie Carter a lot of stick, and they I mean a lot of people give Vince McMahon a lot of stick too, me included. But which one would you pref Which one would I know you picked TNA, but which one would you think is the be better promoter? Well, I think in your opinion. It, all, it all depends on, um, uh, like, in what categories, in the sense of, as far as advertisement and popularity and getting everyone to know, uh, I mean, even non-wrestling fans have heard of WWE, and this man is very good with that. Because um, yeah. uh, uh, 
like for example, I have a brother who is not a wrestling fan at all, and uh, he knows all the wrestlers from WWE because uh, of, like movies and stuff that they've been in, yes. with them promoting yeah. them and all that. And but as far as actual wrestling is concerned, um, I would say Dixie Carter because she. I think she's got talent a lot more is in the sense of she actually uses the talents rather than uh, since someone who uses the popularity. Yes, it, yeah, uh, I think it's more marketing when it comes. To, I mean, that's my opinion on it. Is it's more marketing when it comes to Vince McMahon. I mean, he's proven that over the years. The marketing engines they have and everything, and the merchandise they always they always sell and that. But Dixie Carter has her ways and that to me, but. She can she, she can bring talent in and she's brought she's brought some good talent. The oh, whoever's the VP of talent relations there, if there is a VP of talent relations there, as well. I'm I'm sure she's had her series in who's come to TNA and who I, and who's left to TNA. Uh, but yeah, she she does tend to bring some talent in and she just tend to use them right as well. I.e. Mr. Anderson. Yep. Because uh, Mr. Anderson wasn't well. He was used to a point, and then it just died out for the for him, and then he, apparently from what I heard with him and uh, Randy Orton and that, and it went one thing led to another, and he ended up getting fired. And thank God he's been used right in TNA. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few other people as well that WWE have dropped the ball when it comes to booking, booking in respects of talent as well. Uh, which I mean, there was a lot of guys. I mean, I guess you could say with TNA as well. To, but to, but not as much as WWE. I mean, there was a lot of talent that came in. I mean, Drew McIntyre being one of them. Uh, who's now Drew Galloway in ICW. Uh, he's gone back to ICW and that. I mean, they seriously dropped the ball with him. Uh, it's a wonder he didn't go to TNA to be fa- to to, uh, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would say in booking, in respects of booking with talent, in talent wise, I would say TNA. Definitely tops that build myself. I mean, I, I mean, I could I could think of many reasons. The pipe bomb, the famous pipe bomb in two, was it 2011 with CM Punk? You know, that's probably one of the reasons why WWE's booking, as far as talent is concerned, is not very good. Right, uh, what does the the future hold for Colleen Masters? Well, hopefully, I'll be. A champion one day and back in the ring for the matter. But I currently, I if I can't go back into wrestling for whatever reason, I think the future holds for me. It would be well, I'll be focusing more on YouTube because that's what I've been doing. I I've, I've actually started doing the let's plays or video games and stuff to uh, give myself options for the future, but. The fit is, uh, but hopefully one day the future will have clean masters in America. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, I've, I've, I've noticed some of that as well. There, uh, your yeah, let's play. Uh, what was it called? Is it Call of Duty? No, uh, no way. I'm the, never playing that game. Uh, yeah. It's a uh, you played Raider it Underworld. Yeah, that yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Tomb Raider Underworld. Sorry, yeah. I kind of get Call of Duty mixed up with Tomb Raider for Pete's sake. I used to play Tomb Raider a lot. That's a fair well, Call of Duty is a first-person shooter, and I don't play first-person yeah. shooters. So yeah. I, I, I'm not a big fan. I, I don't know why I got that mixed up. That's a fail on my part. Uh, like I say, I've been playing Tomb Raider a while. I, I, actually, I'll go back to... I mean, my thing with Tomb Raider is going back to the old PS1. Same. With, the, with that as well, because Tomb Raider was amazing on the PS1. Well, Tomb Raider 2 especially, that was my particular favourite. I mean, do you have a PS4? Do you have a PS... Uh, or are you an Xbox girl, or...? Um, I I have a PS4 and a, a Xbox 360, and I'm, I've actually started off my first, um, when it came to PlayStation versus Xbox, I was always PlayStation with one and two, but 360 had more to offer me than PS3 did at that time, and that's the same thing with the PS4 and the Xbox One now, PS4 has more to offer me, hence why i chosen the PS4. Yeah, I've noticed that as well with my PS4, because I've got a PS4. I've got a PS4 and a PS3 as well, and I've noticed there's there seems to be a lot more to offer on the PS4 than there is a, an Xbox One, at least. I mean, all right, Xbox One, you can go online and so on, but you know, and you could like film things for YouTube, as you can do on the PS on the PS4 as well. But there's a lot like the 
you could broadcast, there's like the share button, I mean, I found out what the share button was for <laughs> <laughs> on the control pad, I'm like, I used to play, I played the games a lot and everything, I'm like, what's this share button for? And now I found out what it is, you can share your, your game, you can capture like game footage and everything and share it on YouTube, as i.e. what you're probably doing with the, with the Let's Play that you're starting. Well, I've actually got a capture card for the 360 because I'm uh, sh I was trying to learn from the basics uh, onwards because yeah. I don't actually have um, that option for the 360 and yeah. I wanted to, because I've got more games for that, I wanted to try that before I experimented with the PS4. Yeah, I, I, need, a capture, I need a capture card, but so dear. But I mean, I, I mean, I'll probably, I'm, I'm probably searching for one, but for now I'll have to, I'll have to make do with the uh, the trick with the uh, that I've learned for the PS4 at the moment so I'm going to have to make do with that for the time being I've now got another trick as well I'll still use my PS3, my PS3 but once uh, WWE 2K15 comes out I'll probably go off the PS3 but we'll see anyway I've always said that, that I've always said that the PS4 came out at the wrong time it should have came out in summer but the, 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 the trouble was with the PS3 uh, the PS4 rather it came out at the wrong time in my opinion it should have came out a little couple of months earlier because it came out as the new games were coming out, i.e., 2K14 and and all that, and it just it it just took a lot of momentum off the uh, the actual hype that it had for when it was coming out, the PS4 was coming out, and the build up and that. That's just my opinion on it. Um, well, it helps that the Xbox One had so much bad press. So, um, well, that'll, oh yeah, that'll probably help the PS, the PlayStation people a lot, the Sony PlayStation people a lot as well. That the Xbox One had a lot of bad press and in that but Xbox One just tend to have a lot of bad press as well yeah and the fact that the uh, newest Tomb Raider is going to be exclusive for Xbox One uh, for at least the first six months or so I have got a load of people including myself very angry but um, less said about that the better right now yeah I, you're all right. I'm a little bit angry myself uh, I mean I've ordered uh, WWE 2K15 with Sting uh coming out as well and I was expecting that to come out on the 20 was it the 28th uh, beginning of November for the P, for the PlayStation 4 and the PS3 but then I found out that they dropped the PS4 and they held the PS4 back to November 18th which I am fuming about I mean I know it's they've held it back to make it better and whatnot because apparently they've still got the same graphics for the 2k15 for the ps3 version and that it's still the same as it was on the year uh, 2k14 the graphics and that but apparently they're proving the graphics for the uh the ps4 lot and that but it's just release the thing that's all i ask don't hold games back just release it man yeah, you, well, up, you know you, you build all the hype and everything and then you just hold it back yeah well ever since um i remember when True Crime Streets of Edo came out, I heard about the game five years before it actually released. Yeah. So I, I'm i not a very patient person usually, but as long as it's not a five year wait, I'm cool with it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, to a point, but I'm not a very patient person. You know, if the game's going to come out, I say just bring it out. You know, you, you had your opportunities to make the game and, and everything and improve it. And just bring the game out, man. That's all I say. I just hope it's worth the wait. That's all I'm. I mean, that's all I'm saying. I just thank God that I've that I've ordered it and everything. And yeah, two Crown Streets of LA. What a game! I remember that game very, very well. What was that for PS2? Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, PS, yeah, PS2. That was well. What a game that was. Uh, I'm gonna leave. Right. The final thing I'm gonna let you do is uh, basically respond. I know you've said a little bit of it earlier on. But I'm going to give you a platform to respond to what Jezebeth said, or as you call it, Jezebel. So, this is your platform right now. Feel free to respond and hold nothing back, okay? Like I said, we 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 welcome pipe bombs on this show, at least I do, anyway. So, don't hold nothing back. Anyway, over to you. Well, I am generally a nice person usually, but when it comes to Jezebel, if you are listening, I cannot stand your insults anymore. It's getting on my nerves. There's a reason why I call you Jezebel. It's because you're absolutely boring and you call me boring, you call me clean disasters, you call me all sorts of things. And it's, you know what? I'll be seeing you next week on my channel anyway. And I will, you know, we'll just have it out, right? Face to face, get whatever you want to say to my face, uh, to my face and I'll do the same. And 
if you still want to have a rivalry with me afterwards, then uh, whatever. I am seriously fed up with you right now, so just leave me alone for Christ's sake. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Colleen Masters' interview right there. Uh, I give her the opportunity. Uh, you got in touch with me via YouTube when you saw when you saw the interview and you heard the interview. I'm gonna get another person as well that uh, Jezebel has called out. You know, I'm all about opportunities on this show, ladies and gentlemen. When it comes to interviews, if someone calls somebody out, i.e., what Jezebel did with Colleen here. I am all about opportunities as well. Co Colleen wrote back on um, on YouTube saying that she did, didn't particularly appreciate being slagged off. Say your piece. Come on the show. I'd like to say, if you've got something to say on this show, feel free to call. I'll let me know and come on and I'll give you the platform to say it. Get it off your chest. I hold nothing back on this show. That's what I love about doing this show as well. It's hold nothing back. Just shoot for the stars. No kayfabe, no scripts. You obviously didn't like what Jezebel said about you. I give no, you I the not. opportunity. Yep, I give you the opportunity to come on, and you've said your piece. No doubt she'll, she'll probably retaliate when she see when she hears this, because I would imagine she'll she'll be, she will. Uh, she'll she will. This. But uh, you are doing a Q and A with her. Yes, I am. Yes. So, so considering um, what's considering what's been going down on the podcast and everything, I think uh, that Q and A may turn somewhat to a to a slanging match between the two of you as well, cons considering, but uh, like you say, you've gifted the opportunity to have it out and to settle the beef and everything, so... Well, she I'm... always has the last words, so and no matter what I say she'll just say something else. That's why I invited her to just have it out you know, once and for all, hopefully Yeah. yeah. Is she, what's she like to work with in the ring? Uh, I would say professional but then she screams, so I don't know. It's a, it could be professional slash annoying, depending on how you look at it. Annoying part would be the scream. Yeah, <laughs> especially when um, uh, you're, say, standing on the ring apron and she screams and you uh, stack it on the ring apron like I have. Yeah, that yeah. would be fun. Yeah. Well, if it works for her, then by all means, but... Yeah, a lot of people will probably find that annoying, but uh, like I said, I've never been on the receiving end of any screams. Jezebeth, if you're listening, thank you for doing what you did. Thank you for coming on the show and everything. You're an absolute sweetheart, but yeah, I wouldn't want anyone screaming in my face, but uh, that's just me. Right, uh, that's the end of it, actually. Uh, like I said, it's, it's like to see you're the second interview that I've done, uh, Jezebeth being the first. Uh, hopefully we can do another interview and if sometime in the future as well uh, like I said and hopefully I can get you back on the show as well sometime in the future as well to talk maybe give your opinion over about TNA as well if you yeah. since you watch the TNA product yeah looking forward to it yeah because if since you watch the TNA product as well you can I mean what I like to do on the show as well guys as, we, as you guys well know is you know I bring people on to talk about WWE and that and maybe we can do something a little different and have you on and talk about the TNA product and t the TNA show as well that's been on the air and everything and give your opinion since you are a TNA fan. Something, are you, is that something cool? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it too. I mean, all these ideas that are coming on my head. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Right, that's about it for the interview, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you've enjoyed it. This will go on the next episode of the podcast, which I'm guessing is 27. I don't even know my own episodes, man, for Pete's sake. Good grief. You know what to feel when you don't know your own episodes. Yeah, uh, well, I forgot the name of a company earlier, so... <laughs> yeah, it's episode 27. I was right. Thank you, God. Uh, so this interview will go up on episode 27 of the Wrestling uh, Matters podcast as well. I would probably do a separate as well, like I did with the Jezebeth, but I don't know, we'll wait and see. If not, I'll just put it on the podcast. It will, you guys will get to hear it on the podcast or as separate anyway. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much, Colleen, for coming on and doing this interview. It has been fun. Me. It is absolute pleasure. Uh, like I said, hopefully we can get you on the podcast as well in the future to talk to you and, a and maybe do another interview. And uh, good luck with your illness and good luck with the recovery and that, and hope you do get back in the ring. Thank you, and uh, good luck with your future podcasts, too. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, 
I appreciate that very much indeed. Uh, I am very, very grateful for the support and everything. Very grateful for what you've said as well. And uh, yeah, I've only done twenty. I'm up to my twenty seventh episode of the podcast. Besides all the podcasts that I do for other promotions and that, and the and people support and pe- the feedback and that, and it's just been phenomenal. And I can't thank anybody enough. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen. I am the head Anthony Walker, the H D the the of the D, the host of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Hope you've enjoyed this interview. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Th- hope you've enjoyed this interview as well. Thank you, Colleen, for coming on. Thank you. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye. Bye. Yeah. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. Follow Colleen Masters at Colleen Masters on Twitter. Also, facebook.com forward slash Colleen Masters. And make sure you check out the YouTube page of the interview to make sure you follow her and subscribe to her on YouTube. Colleen Masters, thank you so much. Wrestling matters, wrestling fans.